Hello and welcome to another episode of Ladies Talking Business. I'm your host, Morimi Akonwo. Our guest today is a certified esthetician and cosmetic scientist, founder and CEO of House of Coco Skincare, a scientifically formulated skincare brand with a focus on crafting acne and hyperpigmentation solutions for African skin. She is also a petroleum engineer with a wealth of experience in consulting and project management for full field development or redevelopment, feed, well intervention and other well engineering projects. She is currently the engineering and operations manager at Dexter Upstream. She was awarded a first class honors upon completing of her undergraduate studies in BSc Petroleum Engineering, recognized for three consecutive years by the Provost of Engineering as Excellent Student of the Year. She is Chidiogo Sharon Mbelede. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you. Chidiogo. For so which would you prefer Marie. Chidiogo Sharon? Anyone works <laughs> actually. Okay. So we could go for Chidiogo, Coco, anyone works. Coco, we go with Coco. That's fine. Okay. So what's the motivation for, you know, branching um, into skincare formulation? Because I know you, you haven't left um, engineering. Oil and gas. Yeah. Well, to be very honest, I think my passion started when I had used some organic skincare products um, <laughs> just as I was wrapping up my undergraduate studies in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And upon um, stopping the products, my skin had a bad reaction. If you're familiar with products that are laced with steroids, you know that once you discontinue mm -hmm. them, your skin goes from amazing to terrible. Mm -hmm. And so I struggled for a year trying to fix that or trying to understand what was going on with my skin until I realized that those products were actually laced with steroids. So I thought to myself, would it be better for me to learn how to make these things so that I won't have these issues again with my skin? Because I'm usually very particular. And that was how House of Coco was born. I did some research, I got certified, and here we are today. So how is it to get certified? Um, I wouldn't say particularly easy. The entry requirements are a bit basic. You need like a secondary school, a living certificate. Some institutions will require a BSc. Okay. In my case, I had my BSc already, so I went ahead to get the certification. So it's not very steep, although there are different levels of certifications you can go for from basic, intermediate to advanced. So it really depends on what your goal is. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So as an aesthetician, what does it take to be a good one, in your own opinion? Hmm, okay. In my opinion, I think the first thing you need is passion because mm -hmm. it's a very sensitive field. We're dealing with people's skin. The first thing anyone sees when they look at you is your skin. Your mm -hmm. skin is the largest organ of your body. So I think the first thing you need is passion. A passion for helping people, not necessarily just beauty. You know, because okay. when you're motivated to help people, I believe that you will go the extra mile to make sure you're doing it the right way. You know, there's lots of brands that want to help people, but they're not exactly certified and they're doing things the wrong way. So when you have that passion, you go for your certification next. So you ensure you're doing it the right way. So I think that's what you need. First, the passion and two, the qualification. The qualification is very important, it's especially very in this part important. of the world. Where it is. It absolutely <laughs> where we is. I agree we'll with talk you. about that we'll later. We'll talk about that <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the business of skincare in okay. Nigeria. The market is saturated and I'm highly, sure you're highly saturated. Highly saturated, <laughs> yes. So how can a brand best distinguish itself from others in the industry? Okay, I would say in a market like Nigeria where you know that the beauty industry is saturated, the first thing you want to do is identify your unique selling points as a brand. What makes you stand out from the rest of the brands? Because skincare um, is a bit um, consumer goods because we have the regular cleansers, toners, moisturizers. So how are you going to stand out as a brand? So you want to do your product differentiation or your brand differentiation so that people can tell you apart from every other brand. On Instagram, you see sponsored ads. Everyone is saying, my skin cleared up as this and that and that. How are you going to stand out as a brand? You need to do that. And another thing you can do or I encourage people to do is be innovative. Create new products. If you see a product that is trending in the West, you know, European beauty, try and bring that into Nigeria or try to make your own version of something. So just be innovative and stand out from the rest of the brands. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, because of the way the beauty industry is, most of the 
beauty items we use come mm -hmm. from you know overseas yeah they do so it just makes sense for you to try to get yours done yeah. but how can you then run a profitable beauty business in nigeria i know i know <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, head I know that doing business in Nigeria is not easy. It's not easy. Yes. It's not. So, but what has worked for you so far? Okay. Running a profitable business in Nigeria is an uphill task. I will tell you that for free. Um, so as a business, because most of our, not most, all of our active ingredients are imported because of the purity levels that are required for formulation. So we are very much affected by the you know, up and down of the exchange rates. So um, what we try to do is identify redundant operating costs and let them go so that our bottom line is healthy enough to continue providing products for our customers without transferring like that heavy cost from the Forex to them. Um, for the longest time we did that, I mean, when the exchange rate started fluctuating in 2020, we maintained our prices for two full years. You know, we didn't change anything. We're just working on optimizing our own expenses, our own running costs. So when we did that for a while, and it got a lot worse this year, we had to review something. So just only last year, we actually reviewed our retail prices. But then I feel like every business owner should be able to identify the, their cost components, your direct costs, your indirect costs, mm -hmm. and, you know, manage your finances properly if you want to stay profitable. Because it's very easy to see your revenue and think, oh, I've made so, so, and so million this month. How much of that is actually profit? You have manufacturing costs, you have operating costs, you're paying your staff, you're mm -hmm. running ads. How much mm -hmm. of that is actually profit? So you need to go into the nitty gritty details and understand the cost components of your business. Then you can say, okay, this is my profit level. And really that's all you have to do day in day, every day, every week, every month to ensure you're profitable. Amazing, Coco. We'll speak more about this shortly. Definitely. We will be back for more conversations with our guests after the break. I'm still here with Chidiogo Mbelede, CEO House of Coco Skincare. All right, Coco. Um, so you've been in this industry for some years, and yeah, I think it's okay to call years. you an authority. Yeah, five years. Uh, it's not been. <laughs> so what major improvements excite you about the skincare industry in Nigeria? Hmm, something very exciting about the beauty industry right now is the fact that we have this movement away from bleaching and whitening products. It makes me really happy. Oh, yeah, that's true. We have it's that like at the moment, the bug, you yeah. know. So everyone is talking about, okay, healthy skin, lighter skin isn't always healthier skin, mm -hmm. and raising awareness for these products. Because the truth is, some people are not looking to bleach, but then they end up buying products and they end up bleaching their skin, mm -hmm. you know. So some people are not aware. They don't know what ingredients to look out for. Some brands don't even have an ingredient list, and, you know, they're mixing all sorts. So... There's a lot of awareness around that a lot. And then we have skincare bloggers that are also calling awareness for that, raising awareness for that, calling everyone's attention to, you know, look out for this when you're buying products, look out for that when you're buying mm -hmm. products. And I think it just makes me so happy because as an esthetician and a cosmetic scientist, what I want to see is healthy skin. I want to see people's skin thriving. I have a lot of clients that come in or they send us messages and then they're struggling. Once I see your skin when you're doing the consultation, I can tell that you use products that have been laced with steroids because there's a way the skin just looks when that happens. Trust me, it's thin. The veins are very visible. You know, they have lots of acne because once you stop using them, you have steroidal acne coming in full force. So we can always tell that. But then it's exciting for me because um, brands that are focused on creating healthy skincare products, brands that actually make scientifically formulated products, it opens up a new market for us. You know, a lot more people are going to be on the lookout for 
brands that they can trust, products they can trust. And so, yeah, the move away from bleaching and whitening products is the most exciting thing Yeah, the move right is actually now. quite commendable. It is. Because it seems like over the last one year or thereabout, there's just been this new wave of healthy I skincare know. lovers. It's amazing to see. I'm yeah. very happy we're getting there as a country. Talking about steroids, can you give us some examples of steroids or things to look out look for out before for. you pick up a skincare? Okay, so when you're buying a skincare product, you want to make sure there's an ingredient list. If there's no ingredient list, you put that back on the a shelf. A lot of Nigerian <laughs> skincare manufacturers don't like to put don't, their ingredients on it. I know that. It. Because the truth is, some of them, most of them actually just mix in a bunch of different things. You know, mm. um, some products that we used to treat, like maybe fungal infections or bacterial infections, topical creams that you get from a pharmacy, they just mix a bunch of different oh. things because most of those most of those um, topical creams have um, a lightening effect as a side effect. It's not intended to, so they pack all that into the mm. products. They can't okay. list that brand that you know there's just five hundred naira at that pharmacy or one thousand naira, and they're selling it for sixty thousand naira on Instagram or whatever. So yeah, their profit margins are insane. It's Don't worry. Crazy. That's how you see fifty percent <laughs> off, eighty percent off, and then we that were importing you know, actives from the US, from Europe, we can't afford to do that. And then people think you're being proud, you don't want to run you're sales, you're being with your stingy brand. with your, it's not that, <laughs> it's really I, not I that. I understand that So now. an ingredient list is something you want to look out for. The mm -hmm. second you don't see, don't go any further, just put that back on the shelf. But then when it comes down to a brand has an ingredient list on their product, you want to be able to identify the ones that will work for the issue that you're seeking to treat. Okay. So I would definitely recommend a consultation. So a consultation is always... You should always go for that. At okay. House of Cuckoo, we do free consultations before every purchase. We also have like a paid service, but everyone that messages us gets a consultation. Whether you want it or not, we're asking you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a choice because we don't want to sell you something and then you come back and say, it didn't work for me, or you go on the internet and call us out and say something didn't work for you. So you're getting a consultation whether or not you want it. <laughs> and it's free. Okay. So that's how we do things. Definitely get a, com a consultation. Amazing. So talking about the um, organic skincare products, I know right. we, we touched on it earlier. We did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know that there's this notion that they are safer to use because they are organic. First of all, organic. What does it mean organic? to be organic? <laughs> you know, that's one. And mm -hmm. Okay, so what are your thoughts on that? And do you think that these um, organic skincare manufacturers are taking advantage of, you know, people who have insecurities? Um, okay, let's start with what is organic, organic right? Yeah. Organic is freshly grown or, you know, straight from nature. That word organic in the U.S. is not regulated by the FDA. And mm -hmm. so when you go to the supermarket, you see a lot of products saying organic, this organic, that. but when you read the ingredient list, you realize that it's not, organic. It's not really because the word is so vague so broad it's unregulated even in the u.s so people throw it around very casually so when it comes to skincare products someone says organic what they're looking out for is natural if you're like me i just want something natural i don't want all these chemicals you know and it's sad because saying something is organic and it's safe just because it's natural it's very dangerous there are lots of poisonous plants that that grow in nature you can't say because it's naturally safe. It's poisonous. And if you get it on your skin or into your system, you'll probably die. Snakes are natural, but if they <laughs> bite you, their venom is not. If, if it bites you, like, you're gone. So I think um, people were just misled. You know, when we started organic skincare in Nigeria, it was more about shea butter, coconut oil, and things like that. But then, as usual, mm -hmm. the um, bleaching industry felt, oh, organic is taking up the market, so let's start calling our products organic. organic. And that's what they did. It's organic, organic, you don't need to worry about anything. In five days, this product will clear your acne, your dark spots, your sunburn, your green veins. And it's organic. One product, five <laughs> days. I want to speak to your, I want to speak to the person who trains you. <laughs> You know, so I don't think so. Personally, I always say believe the science. I believe mm -hmm. I work with science. I'm a cosmetic scientist and I also have a science background as an engineer as well. So I believe the science. I work with the facts. If a product is natural and we've tested it to yield certain results, I'm, I'll work with that product. Mm -hmm. If an ingredient is synthetic and it's been tested and proven to yield certain results, I'll work with it. So our formulas contain a mix of natural and also synthetic 
um, ingredients, active ingredients to yield results, no side effects. So believe the science, the science, the beauty is in the science, just believe the science. Beauty is in the science. It's in the science. So, so how, how can we better regulate this organic... I'm not trying to pick on anyone. I'm just trying to say, because we see it around Please in the lot. Like organic, organic, organic. And yeah, I'm sure no. at some point someone was fair for that. I, I, I did. That's I how did this was born. Too. I did. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I but understand. But how can you better regulate this part so it's not like they're taking advantage of people? Awareness. You just need to keep educating people. If you have a platform as a skincare blogger, talk, talk about it. If you have a platform as a business owner, a skincare brand owner, talk about it. Because um, some of these brands even would go the extra mile to get the nice packaging and everything. Mm -hmm. But still, your the content, content is bleaching you know and like i said the word organic is unregulated in the u.s so imagine the u.s a more advanced country Compared what are we going to, to do so i think awareness definitely mm. more awareness and then i think we're we're on the right right path already so i think the more we do that the better things would be definitely i agree with you but we'll talk about this shortly we will go on a quick break now please stay with us Thanks for staying with us on Ladies Talking Business. We have been having conversations with Chidiogo Mbelede, a certified skin esthetician. So, Coco, I just like that name, you know, the way it comes That's up. That's okay. <laughs> so, can you share with us some safe skincare practices that you think everybody should, you know, Okay, Do. so some skincare tips or lifestyle tips. Mm -hmm. uh, for skincare, first of all, skincare is a lifestyle. It's like brushing your teeth or taking a shower. So I would say be consistent is the first thing. When you have the right skincare products, you want to make sure that you're using them correctly. So always refer to the usage directions on the products or well, sometimes on the website. the ones on the products can Come be on. misleading. Misleading, okay. Because manufacturers just, you know, you manufacture and just will use twice a day. Yeah, twice so if it's a an day. exfoliant, why use an exfoliant twice a day? It depends on the percentage of the active ingredients. You can use it really? twice a day. If it's as low as one, two percent for certain ingredients, okay. you know. So it really depends on the product. It's very directions are very product specific. So mm -hmm. there are certain things you can use once a day, twice a day. You can have two cleansers, cleanser, cleanser. This one says use two times daily. This one says use two times daily. So it depends on the manufacturer's, um, you know, instructions, really. Okay, so other yeah. safe practices? Other safe practices. Um, okay, I like to say, make sure you're exfoliating. Don't use your body towel on your face. When mm -hmm. you take a shower, have a separate towel for your face. I always say use a kitchen towel, just a paper towel you can dispose. That way there's less risk of accumulated bacteria. You don't have to worry about if it's being washed properly. So use a disposable one. Um, something else, um, don't go doing your DIY skincare <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Trust me, you will do more harm than good. You know, so just stick to, and don't switch from product to product, stick to a brand or stick to a product that works for you. Wait at least eight weeks to see if something is working for you for jumping to the next, because a lot of um, time we have customers that have used the product for two weeks or some, five days. It's and not like, It's not working. I want to change this. <laughs> yeah, and that's obviously the fault of our wonderful organic industry. Mm, five fast days, action. fast action. <laughs> so I would say don't jump from product to product as well. And then just use as directed that's a very common issue we have in the industry like people don't use products as directed and they end up getting wrong results bad results or no results at all so mm -hmm. use as directed interesting thanks for that coco so oh, what wow. message do you have i'm just taking the advantage because i have an institution on my seat so okay <laughs> i need to I'll cover the invoice <laughs> after this <laughs> so what message do you have for women who feel insecure about their skin First things first, you're not alone. Okay. And it's very understandable that the way your skin looks or your appearance will dampen your confidence or your self-esteem, but you're not alone. I've had my own fair share of every beauty person, every skincare professional has had their own fair share. Why? We're human beings. We experience that. Everyone has bad skincare days. Everyone has bad skin days, bad skin periods, sometimes yeah, even months. Even when you're following your routine. Even when you're just, following your routine. Yeah. So I think the first thing would be just understand that you're not alone. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, try to get the right products or the right services that would help you manage whatever skin condition, situation it is that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Reason being is if you decide, if you feel low and you just sort of allow yourself wallow in it, even your mood, your hormones can start to affect your mm -hmm. skin. So I think the first thing is you're not alone. Find good products, find someone that cares about you. Try to spend time with your loved ones so that it can sort of boost your mood because it's very easy to wallow in that whole thing. And um, ultimately, like, you'd come out on top of it. And when you look back at it, you'd be happier. I know people would stare at you funny sometimes, yeah. but you just have to look past that because you're beautiful regardless. So you're oh, not alone. Thank you for that. Yeah. And I think another thing I would like to also mention is that people should just consult with their estheticians just, just do that i think so because people will give you advice rub watermelon on your face use this pineapple to do this uh, okay Speak to we don't even want to guess that <laughs> the turmeric and everything that it's we have to lot. put on our faces at some lot. point okay it so is. this is a bit personal before i let you go okay how have you been able to you know merge being um a, merge a beauty business okay. with being um a petroleum engineer well, hmm, okay, I think I would say that I have an amazing team. So mm -hmm. um, I started the business just as I was wrapping up my first degree. So I've had five years to build something and I think I have built an amazing team from production to cons my consultants that work um, with the clients, my fulfillment staff, everything, marketing, I have an amazing team. And so that allows me to focus on my day job as, uh, as an engineering operations manager. So in the beginning, it wasn't always easy because we started off as a one-man team of just myself. Mm -hmm. um, but as time went on, I saw the need for structure and really put a lot of time and effort into that so right now I would say that having an amazing team and mm -hmm. the almighty grace of God because it's not enough to have a team you know and I'm grateful for that like we're able to make things work and the business can run without me I don't have to be in the country and I think every business owner should look to get to that level so that's how we're able to do that's both amazing. of them. amazing well done so how do you avoid burnout you know from being this and being that and I try to take like a vacation at the end of every quarter <laughs> I try, to, I try to manage my stress on a daily level. Sometimes it's not enough because I might have a house of cocoa project and a work project running at the same time. But then during the weekends, I try to rest and I also try to take vacations like every end of quarter. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Coco, yeah. thank you so much for coming on thank Ladies Talking you Business. More. Wish you the very best. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into Ladies Talking Business today. Do join us the same time next week for another episode. And don't forget to follow us on Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube to catch up with our programs. I am Murami Akou. See you next time.